everybody, Caleb here in the Rosa Streamworks Workshop. Today we've got this mandolin. It's an old Gibson. It's a 1918 Gibson mandolin. And it needs quite a bit of work, but it's come a long way to get here. This mandolin is from a country called Palau. It's a group of islands in the Pacific Ocean. I have the stamps it took to get here. This is off the off the box it came in. I covered up any of the personal information, but you can see these uh, stamps, very different. I doubt very many people have seen stamps like those. But this mandolin's come a long way to get some work done, and boy does it need some work. You might be able to see there's a big old crack in the top. And not only is the crack running this way, it's busted across this way. There's another crack, I think, here. The back has started coming off. I'm not sure a good way to show. There you can kind of see the back started coming off. There, it, the binding is busted here. Jerry's already taken a look at this and said that the back's definitely gonna have to come off because there's just not a good way to fix this through the sound hole. And I think we may have a little bit of an easier time since the back is starting to separate already. I'm gonna go ahead and get this torn apart the rest of the way and bring you back before I start taking the back off. Well, I've just, just stuck this in here. I haven't pried, I haven't broken anything loose. This is just how loose it was when it came in, and it goes all the way in and sticks out the other side. I have the heating element sitting over there, so I can warm this up to hopefully get this glue to go a little easier. But I suspect this won't be all that difficult. on before because the sides didn't line up really well and it looks like there's some spots where it's a slightly different color like it's been worked on. That being said it does smell like hide glue when I get it warm. So I guess if it has been worked on it's been worked on by someone who had an idea what they were doing. They didn't get the sides to line up very well with the back. There were a couple of different places where the binding hung over the sides. Here we go. Off she comes. Heavy. Well, there's that answer. Uh, can you see those cleats? Somebody else has worked on this at some point. It's got a couple of indexing pins as well. So somebody else has cleated this at some point. But, uh, there you can see them. There's four very little cleats there. We're going to have to work on this crack. Um, it's kind of hard to see the uh, place where it's busted in this direction. On this mandolin, I'm kind of thinking we can get this center crack to close up a little bit if I maybe stick to get a board that will go across this and clamp it to the sides because if I put some downward 
pressure on this, this does start to close up. I'm not sure how well you can see it. When I press down, the crack closes up most of the way. At least to be a lot better than the way it is. That might be how we do that. I just have to find something that kind of closely follows the curve or close enough that I can set it across and clamp it here and here or maybe something flat across the bottom and just clamp it here and here because it's not just a inward that doesn't really close it it's it's a little bit of a downward right at the crack it's an awful close well you can see I've got this in here clamped up it is clamped up dry so there's no glue in there yet but it did close up this seam quite a bit actually it's closed up this seam entirely I've got these two clamps on here and I've also got this big bar clamp pulling it in this way and I can kind of do little adjustments with the red clamps to get it evened out a little bit better but this is looking pretty good this is probably what I'm going to need. That man doesn't ring. So next time you're out in the evening, look and see if that old moon is blue. If it is, you'll know when it's happy. He'll be picking some old bluegrass tunes. Get tall. Well, there it is, all clamped up. I think it's looking pretty good. You can barely even tell that seam is there. I think it's going to look real good once it's good and dry. So this old mandolin sat up overnight letting this center seam dry and I've gone ahead and made some little cleats and they are spruce just like the top but they're running perpendicular in the grain from the top so that'll help strengthen up this break so that it won't break again. My next thing is to figure out a good way to clamp these in. I haven't really decided on a good way because it's kind of hard to get into these center ones. Even if I have the longest reach clamp, it doesn't quite make it where I want it to in the center here, even through the sound hole or from the side. So I gotta figure out how I want to clamp these in. I'm gonna do some thinking about it before I glue them up. Well, I decided to just magnet them in. It's quite a bit of pressure holding them down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just set this aside and let it dry. I think that should be good and strong once it's dry. Now I can start working on a cleat for the back. Well, this crack on the back right here probably needs cleated. There's a little bit of glue on it, so I'm going to clean that up. But I think I'm going to start looking for a piece of wood. I saw this, and this might be what I want to use. Take a piece out of here. I haven't quite decided yet because this is going to be visible from the outside. You can clearly see the label from the outside and I worry. I want something that looks good along this crack. So I'll see what I can do. Well I've got a cleat made up and it's kind of a small one. It's going to go right, right about there so I don't get into the area where the label is but I get away from the edge. And I think that'll do and the grain is running this way whereas the rest of the grain is running this way. So I think that should help us out. I'm going to put some glue on that and get it clamped up. Well, uh, these sat overnight and now we've got a little bit of a change of plans on this. I had cleats in here, but uh, Jerry came over and took a look at it and he thought that these two bottom ones probably would not cut it for this section of the mandolin. So. I've gone ahead and made a larger cleat. If you've seen the video recently of Jerry working on the fiddle, he's done something recent, very similar. So basically this is just going to go in here and it's going to cover up quite a bit of it. It really shouldn't affect the sound all that much being this close to the tail block and it's 
fairly thin, not as thin as these cleats were, but thin nonetheless. And this should really keep this area from breaking again. So I am going to go ahead and glue this in. Jerry's taking a look at it. He's pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy with it. It seems to sit flat if we push it down. So I'm going to get it glued in and clamped up. Well, I've got it clamped up. <laughs> I've got a couple clamps on here. I did wet down the patch. Hopefully you might be able to see. Maybe you can't. You can kind of see there's a piece of plastic in here. Hopefully this is the plastic is supposed to bend, so it will maybe push this this patch into more of the bowl shape. That was the the point in wetting it down was maybe to give it some flex to hopefully push this center part into the roundness of the top of the mandolin. So I'm going to set this aside and give it some time to dry. I want to get this nice and dry, and especially because I wet this down, it's going to take a little while to get good and dry. I've got leather on both sides, by the way. It's good and safe. Well, right where this break was, this binding had come off, and then there was a missing piece, and I've gone ahead and found another piece that was pretty close. Bring it up. Let it focus. It doesn't fit exactly. It needs a little bit of scraping, and then it is a little tall on this side too, but that that's okay. I can scrape that back down. I think you won't really notice. Anyway, I'm just gonna probably scrape it down with this exacto knife. Get it sitting flush and I think it'll look pretty good. I believe with this patch now glued in, I cleaned up the top a little bit with some sandpaper. I had a few little spots where some leather stuck to it. I think it because it was wet. Anyways, now that it's glued in there, I think we're ready to glue the back back on. I am going to start doing that. I'm going to get some of these clamps out and get them a little closer to the size they need to be before I put any glue on. That way I don't have to sit here and adjust 20, 25 clamps trying to get them on there. So I'm going to get these clamps ready and then I'll bring you back about the time I start putting glue on it. With the indexing pins in here, I pretty much only have one place I can put this, and that's wherever the pins go in the holes. So, I'm going to work with what I've got. I'm not starting over through the interruption, because if you're not getting interrupted, you're not doing it right. So, there's only really one place this can go on. So I'm not really too worried too much about lining it up on the sides. It's going to go on the way it's going to go on, and... There's very little I can do, really. I can maybe push in the sides if I'm not quite happy with where they're at, but this is what we're getting. So, I'm gonna start spreading some glue. I'm gonna use the paintbrush to make sure it goes everywhere I want it. If you hear that guitar ring, don't you love to hear Bill sing? That old bluegrass sound makes me smile And while I'm on this earth I'm gonna pick for all I'm worthy for I'm picking in that sweet by and by banjo Did you hear that banjo ring? Don't you love to hear Bill sing? That old bluegrass sound makes me smile And while I'm only certain gonna pick for all I'm worth before I'm picking in that sweet by and by fiddle So I've got most of it clamped up. I can't actually get any clamps on this top part because of how steep the top is. So I think I'm going to go get the uh, the inner tube and just give it a good wrap. I think we should be good. There's that wrapped. I may still get another clamp and clamp it this way just to, just to be safe. So it's glued up. I'm going to leave it overnight to dry. It's looking pretty good. There might be a little bit more glue for me to clean up. but. Once it's all cleaned up, I'm going to set it aside and it's going to dry overnight. should be looking good in the morning. Well, now that we've got the back 
back on this mandolin. We can start talking about reassembly on this thing. I can get the uh, tailpiece back on there and start working our way up. What I'm not really sure about is the frets on this thing. They're really not super low. I mean, they're kind of low, but they're mandolin frets. If I don't have to replace them, I think we'll be better off. And it's not looking like they really need replaced. So I might just string it up as it is. And if they're really bad, I might have to come back and actually change something about them. I'm not thinking they're actually going to be all that bad. I might give them a quick, quick leveling and crowning. Just to make sure everything's good. And then I'll start working on putting this thing back together. I'm getting ready to put strings on this thing. I've got the nut back on, the saddle back on. Sitting right here on the saddle on the bridge. Tail pieces on. I did go ahead and did a really light leveling on these frets. Clean them up all good. This bridge is not adjustable, so if I have to take height off of it, I have to sand it off. That's a little worrisome. Especially because if it is too low, and considering we took this thing apart, it could be that it's moved. It may not have, it may be just the way it was, but it could have moved in taking it apart. If it's too low, I have to add height to this. I'm going to actually like have to shim this some way or another to add height. Just a little worrisome having that non-adjustable saddle on there. Anyway, I am going to start stringing this up and seeing what the action is like. I've got two strings on there right now, just the, the high E strings. And it's not looking great. It is awfully high towards the top. And as I get more strings on it and it starts to pull it in, I think it's just going to get worse. This bridge is going to have to come down. I've got the high and low string on. You can kind of see there's a big old space. It's, it's definitely high. I'm going to have to come down with that that bridge. Well, and now that I'm looking at it, it doesn't look like it's fitting the top all that well, so it might just do us all better to bring it down a bit. I might need to talk to Jerry about the best way to bring this bridge down. If it were adjustable, it'd be a little easier to tell where to take off if I had to, but it's not. So if I want to take off of this, I assume I have to take off the bottom, which means I have to follow the curve. Not the easiest thing to do. Not impossible. See if Cherry has any good ideas on how to take that down. I've had a little bit of a complication in putting this mandolin back together. I did level the frets and I had all the strings on it. And then did we notice there's quite a bit of underbow in this mandolin. I mean, even with no strings on it, no tension on it at all. There you can probably see there's quite a bit of underbow like this. So the second you put strings on there, it just gets worse. So we're gonna have to fix that to make this thing playable and playable well. I'm gonna start by trying to take the end of the fretboard off. I've already kind of scored it with the X-Acto knife so I don't chip out any finish more than I want to. I've got the knife heating up with the bridge removal tool. That's where I'm going to start. I'm going to see how that goes before I decide whether to take the rest of it off or if we can't work out a way to fix it with just it partially off. This middle ring don't you love to hear Bill sing? That old grass sound makes me smile. And bottom on this serpent don't I pick for all I'm worthy for I'm picking in that sweet by and by. this fretboard off up to about almost the fifth fret. Here's where it comes in that there's 
you know, more than one way to skin any cat, but we're going to do it one way, and it's to help not spend too much time on this, but to get it playable as quickly as possible. So I've got this, what we would usually use as a prying tool to get underneath something that was glued on. And I've got sandpaper, which is stick on sandpaper, stuck on both sides. I went ahead and cut it out to the shape. It does not bend all that much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it underneath here, press this down, and I'm going to remove a little bit from both the bottom of the fretboard and the top of the instrument. This way, the fretboard will now come down at a slope a little more than it did, hopefully working out that bow so instead of bowing back up, it will just level it out. This way, the saddle that's been cut down won't be too low. Everything should be just about right this way. It, gluing it back down, it'll make it nice and flat all the way to the saddle. It should make this instrument right, playable, without spending too much time trying to fix it and hoping that we get it closer. I think we can just do it a little more efficiently this way. It's just going to take a little bit of finesse to not take too much, to not scratch up something we don't want. I'm just going to keep going at this for a little while. And maybe every once in a while I'll press it down and check to see what it's like. Well, I've been doing a little bit of sanding and I think it's getting closer to where we want it to be. You can see how I'm doing this. I'm kind of doing, pressing real hard and focusing on the end. And then getting a little bit lighter as I work my way up. That way we take off more where it was bowed the most and then kind of feather it back to taking off very little. It's working pretty well. I'm definitely getting quite a bit out of there. And every once in a while I can stop and press it down real good and check. Got a little bit of a hump right here. Uh, I think we're getting pretty close. I gotta say this prying tool with the stick on sandpaper on both sides has worked really well. If I want to get one side I can kind of just lift up on the fretboard or I can lift up on the tool and press down on the fretboard. So even if I just want to sand one surface it's working pretty well. And then you know if I want to get both I can just press down on the fretboard. And and both surfaces so I because I got sandpaper on both sides. This has worked really well for this. And I think we're getting closer. There's still a little bit of a a little bit of a, a raised end I can clearly see in the body. It does really appear to come up. So if I press down the fretboard to where it's going to be and I look down it, it does look like it's getting closer. There's still definitely a low spot, about halfway up the neck. So I think I'm going to take some more off. Well, I'm done sanding out underneath the fretboard on this. Um, I've had it clamped up, and we put the bridge on and ran a straight edge, and it's looking like it's just about the right height. So what I'm going to do before I just go putting glue in here and clamping it up is we're actually going to clamp it up so that we put a little bit more over bow in the neck. That way when we put some string tension on it, it should just, just straighten it out and it'll be nice and straight. So I've got this set up. You can kind of see here. I've got it set up so that once I put glue under the fretboard, I can set it here, put the clamp on, And this way I can push a little bit of overbow into it 
and while it sets up and dries, it'll keep that over bow we put, help straighten the neck out with the string tension. So it's kind of a time sensitive procedure once I put the glue in. I gotta get it set and clamped here and then I'm gonna put a couple more clamps along the fretboard to make sure the fretboard is good and clamped to the neck. So you can kind of see my mess of clamps. I gotta be ready to go once I start putting the glue in. Well there we go. It's all clamped up. I think it's good to sit this way. There's a little bit of glue. I had a lot of little glue mishaps. But uh, we got there in the end. So I think I'm going to unclamp the board from the table and I'm going to set it to the side and work on something else while this dries. Well, this Gibson mandolin sat up overnight. I've gone ahead and unclamped it. The fretboard is looking pretty good. I went ahead and glued back on this piece of binding on the end of the fretboard that came off when I was lifting the fretboard. Uh, I'm going to give this some time to dry before we go on with this, just to make sure it's good and attached. But it's looking like we're in the home stretch on this mandolin. Well, I'm tuning this old Gibson mandolin up. It's got all the strings on it. We're almost there. I'm just kind of trying to get all the uh, the tension right. Get it up to pitch. a quick intonation check uh, get everything put back on it the pit guard and the cover for the tailpiece make sure it's all cleaned up and we'll take one more good look at this thing <laughs> Gibson mandolin needed a, quite a bit of work when it came in. If you remember, there was a big old hole in this top right about here where the parts of the top had separated. We glued that back together. We put a patch on the inside. There was quite a few other little cracks. This one, I think, there was one. Oh, maybe it was this one. We pleated this one. There was a break in the side we glued back together. After we got this whole mandolin back together, because we took the back off, if you remember, we found out that there was a little bit too much, <laughs> a lot bit too much, underbow in this neck. So what we did was we took the fretboard off to about the fifth. We kind of sanded it out so that instead of a bow, it kind of just leveled itself back out at the end. And it's really helped. This has become a lot more playable. It sounds pretty good. Fairly loud and it uh, sustains for a pretty good amount of time. The action is set pretty good at this point. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna send it over to Jerry for him to take a look at it before it goes on its way back to Palau come a long way for
quite a bit of work, this mandolin. Well, my friends, sometimes your best intentions just go awry. No matter how good you do something, sometimes it just ain't meant to be. And that's what the case is here. This instrument, just sitting in its own case, decided to bust apart again. Seriously, it was just sitting in the case for a day or two. We often let them sit around a day or two and then test them again just before we ship them out. And the stresses in this top or in this mandolin were just too much for this top. I told Caleb when he took it apart and took the back off of it, you know, to put that extra call in that top area because I could tell that top was carved way too thin from the factory or whenever it was carved. I don't know if the factory did it or somebody did it later, but I would assume the factory did it. Just mainly because of the weird shape on this too, because it's just shaped weird. I mean, it's just not the norm. I've seen others shaped pretty similar to this though, to be honest. It's just, but it's just, it just isn't right, period. Anytime you see uh, wood crack across the grain, which it did under here. You can't see it very good on camera now, but it certainly did crack all the way across the grain. And that's before he even worked on it. So anytime you see that, you know there's something wrong with that top. You know, sure enough, when we got into it, I could tell that was super thin in that area. So that's why I had him put that call in there, thinking that that would be strong enough to hold it. Well, obviously it wasn't. And that has pulled forward again, push that top. When the top shrinks this way, then it has to expand the other way. And that's what happened and that's why it cracked on both sides. So the bottom line is we talked to the customer, told them, you know, we were sorry, but it just wasn't meant to be. Because I had played it, it played fine, everything sounded fine, everything was good on it. Like I said, just sitting in the case, it did that. So the customer and I worked out an agreement to build a new top for this. And that's what it really needs. It's a shame to put a new top on a vintage instrument, but sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Many of you would say this is a case where I should do this and uh, you know, because Caleb doesn't have quite have that experience. But I will tell you this, Caleb's done a very good job on removing backs and tops and keeping things intact. So certainly he can remove this and do a good job on it, probably as good as I could do or maybe even better because he does seem to have a lot of patience with that sort of thing. So that's gonna be the tricky part is trying to take this apart as delicately as possible so that we can save this binding. Hopefully we can put the same binding on the new top. In terms of carving the new top, we've already bought a high grade piece of wood for the top. And in terms of carving the top, I have methods that I've worked with over the years that I won't say they guarantee success, but they eliminate a lot of failure points. So I, we will use all that information that I have and I will more or less guide Caleb through the recarving of this all the way through. But I am actually going to have him do most of the recarving and the remaking of this top. Um, you know, I will watch over the whole process, of course, and we'll just work together on it until it's right. But uh, it's a shame, but that's really the truth of the matter. It's nothing that we did or nothing that we could have done any better. I mean, certainly now in hindsight, had we beefed this area up a lot, it probably would have been fine. We beefed it up a little bit thinking that a little bit would be enough, but obviously it wasn't. There's just too much stress. There's a lot of tension when you get eight strings pulling on something. That just goes to show you how much tension there really is on a mandolin like this. So that's enough said. Now you know where we're headed. We're going to take this thing apart again, make a new top for it, and try to salvage this instrument and put it back into shape. We're going to do our best to make it look just like this one. Will it look just like this one? No, but it'll look as close as we can make it look. One more thing about this mandolin, as you can see, I've already taken the pick guard off of it. There is a problem with the pick guard that I noticed, which I didn't know before, but, and apparently this has been a problem a while. Someone looks like they've put hot glue, I call it the hot snot glue, 
on this and that would not have come from the factory this way I know for sure and this pin stuck in the upper hole and wouldn't come out it's rusted type thing and I'm sure that's probably what happened before and then this was glued with the wrong kind of glue so I'm getting in there and I'm cleaning it out I'm gonna put this pin back in and uh, we're gonna try to fix this whole area up here a little bit better and make it a little more like it came from the factory. I think we can do that. Well, you probably just saw Jerry's little introduction, reintroduction of this mandolin. Uh, I'm gonna start taking it apart. I think I'm gonna start trying to get the top off of it. It's a little depressing that we got so much good work done on this and it sat in its case and busted open but um we're gonna get it right one way or another we're gonna get it right so i'm gonna start disassembling getting the strings off getting the tailpiece off doing what i can do well i've got everything off of here the tailpiece the bridge all the strings are tied up up there. Um, I've got the bridge removal tool over off screen heating up so I can I'm going to have to I think lift the fretboard if not all the way off most of the way off and then come back start working on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the uh, heater get warmed up and then I'll turn the camera back on and show you as I start working on it had the bridge removal tool on the fretboard for a little while, getting it warm. Hopefully trying to soften that glue. And uh, you could say that uh, whoever glued this fretboard down last did a pretty good job. I am getting somewhere. It's just taking a little bit of time a lot of bit of heat. It's just not right to treat my heart this way. I can't be your... Heat it up. Pry a little, heat it up, pry a little. A lot of repetition on this one. So I'll probably see if I can't get a little bit more going. And If I remember, I'll bring you back before I get the fretboard off. Well, I said I was going to bring you back before I got the fretboard off, but it kind of all popped off at once. So, uh, sorry about that. But, fretboard's off. I had a little bit of problem with some of this ebony wanting to tear out. As well, the binding on the side of the fretboard wanted to come off, but um, I think with a little bit of glue I can solve most of these problems. But I am going to turn my attention to the top and start working on taking it off. It's going to be very similar. I'm just going to heat the tool, though. I can't really use the heat from the, the actual removal tool, so I'm going to just have to heat my little prying tool and get in underneath the binding. I am going to try to do my best to save this binding. It would be nice if I could pull the binding off the top and then reuse it on the new top so we have some original binding on our new top. Ultimately if it breaks there's not much I can do about it but I will try to be as careful as one can be. I've just about got this top off I think. And I'd like to say that it came easily, nice and clean, but that's not really how it happened. And there's a couple of spots I'm going to have to clean up. But, the lucky thing is, it stopped being replaced. So, I was a little worried about right at the neck block. I don't think it's got a it's got a set screw or a um, indexing pin there is what it's got that I'm running into. Yep. And there's a couple of places where it got kind of busted. But there it is. You see I kind of busted it there. Or maybe you can't see. But 
You might be able to there, and it busted a little bit here, but... Man, it's a mess. But it's off. And that's the good news. I'm going to spend a little bit of time cleaning up the kerf here. There's a little bit of the top left on it. But, uh... I don't know, that's pretty good. I think I'm going to try to actually get the binding off of this. And actually, while I've got the camera on, I'm going to try it. I'm not sure if this is going to be difficult by any means, or if it's going to be a huge pain. Let's try from the outside. I've got my X-Acto knife. I think it might actually heat it up just a little bit. I'm just trying to separate it from the body. Uh, from the top, it is. There's a couple of spots that are a little loose, and I might have better luck starting at that. I'm using the back of the X-Acto knife now because I don't really want to cut this binding. So it's going to take me some time. Oh, you can't see that. Dang it! I'm trying to remove the binding here and I've got the X-Acto knife in there and I'm running the X-Acto knife backwards so I don't cut the binding. It just, it was loose here which is how I got this tool in and it's kind of keeping it open so I can run the X-Acto knife. But it's going to be a little bit of a process so I'm just going to show you how I'm doing it and then I'm going to turn the camera off to do the rest of it. But yeah, just a little bit of prying with an exacto and it's coming off pretty easy. And more importantly, it's coming off in one piece. Alright, so you saw me got that much off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off and get the rest. Well, I'm a little disappointed. I did get it all off, but there was one spot where it broke. Um, it got really thin right here. And I'm not exactly sure why it got so thin right there. But that's where it broke. A little bit of a bummer, but I guess what are you going to do? You know, 100 year old binding. Did the best I could. I did get these pieces off that were under the fretboard area. I got them as off as well. I'm not sure how much Jerry actually wants me to pull off. Whether he thinks I should pull off the inside of the sound hole as well. I don't know. I thought I'd show you one more time. The several cracks are on the top of this mandolin. This one here was here when it came in. So this was probably the first crack, which had been fixed. The second one, which is down the center, was the crack that we fixed. Once again, it's not busted open, but this third one, that's the one that cracked open while it was in its case. And it's just, you know, cracked now three times, basically down the center of the instrument. I'm sure it's just, just too thin. Jerry has gone ahead and picked out some wood for the top. So I've got these pieces. These are going to be the pieces we're going to use. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it goes like this. I haven't yet cleaned up the top, so I'm going to go ahead and do that next. Since the big step would be this, and Jerry's not in the shop right now, so I'll wait to go on with any building until he's here. Make sure I know what I need to be doing. So yeah, I'm gonna get to cleaning this up for a little while. Wait till Jerry comes back. So there's a part where this is kind of broken off. I'm gonna go ahead and put some uh, wood glue on there. So just tight bond. And uh, clamp it up with these clothespins. Should be pretty good. Uh, I'll probably grab a paintbrush. Make it a little bit easier, getting the glue in there. This is pretty common, taking tops or backs off, just a couple of spots to break out. 
So, not a big deal. Just something else to fix. That is if it'll stay. I think that'll do that. So I'll go through and make sure there's no other spots where we might be broken out. I don't think there is, but I'll check real close. So Jerry's back from lunch, and he told me that this brace needs to come out. The reason this brace needs to come out is we need to measure it, like lay it on a flat surface, measure the height off of it, and that brace protrudes further than actually the edge of the top does. So it'll throw off our measurement, it won't sit flat. So once we get rid of this, then we can measure how thick it is from the top of the bulge to the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock this out. So we're over on the table saw because we know that it's flat. And Jerry's got me this indicator here and what it does is it will tell you how much distance is off, basically I am off the table. You can see it's measuring zero right now. When I uh, get the top underneath of it, the part that matters the most is right underneath the bridge. And so, you can probably see there's a little dial here and that's the hundreds of thousands. And then these are your, and your tens and single digits. So we're at about 615 thousands. This is the third or fourth time we've measured it. So I think that's just about right. I mean, we're coming up somewhere between 610 and 615 thousandths. And with a margin of error of five thousandths, the thickness of a sheet of paper, I think we're doing pretty good. I think we've pretty much decided that the bridge on this sits at about 615 thousandths. That'll probably be the safest number to go with, because if it's a little bigger, it's not too bad we might lose a little bit along the way rather than go on the smaller side at 610. So that's how thick from the bottom to the top of the bulge has to be.